with that, I'm, I'm going to get started. So uh, as many of you probably know, Torpedo has a couple of wire products. They've got their, their seven strand uh, wire product that uh, they know they've had for a very long time. Very, very popular uh, wire product that is used by many um, Great Lakes anglers for uh, diver rods. Uh, you know, I've got uh, diver rods with seven strand on it and I, I use those. I especially use the seven strand for my, my deep divers. It's a little bit thinner than the 19 strand and I find it works amazing on my, uh, on my deep divers. That being said, I'm not going to talk too much about the seven strand today. I want to talk to you guys about this one, this product right here. It's the 19 strand torpedo wire. It's, it's a fantastic, uh, it's a fantastic wire. And I think when, when people think wire, they think diver rods. And, you know, I'm going to tell you, like when it comes to this 19 strand, I use it in, in many, many different ways. Uh, you know, so firstly, I would say I do use it with divers. On my boat, I love to run double divers many times, and that's where I have, you know, two two high divers, and then I've got two deep divers. I'll run that seven strand on the deep diver, and I'll run the 19 strand on the high diver. The 19 strand, I, I feel, is just a little bit thicker, and, you know, may not sink quite as deep with the same amount of line. I find it works better as a, as a high diver for my, myself personally, because I'm running four divers at the same time often. So that's when I'll use a 19 strand when I'm using it with, uh, with divers. That being said, um, the 19 strand has a number of other um, benefits and a number of other uses to it. The first thing I'd say, if I compare the seven to the 19, the seven strand has a, you know, th is a 30 pound test. When I think about the 19 strand here, it's a, it's breaking strength is 40 pounds. You know, it's not break is 35. And even when it's kinked, it's got a 30 pound rating. So that's one of the reasons I really like the 19 strand is that 40 pound test. And it's definitely not as fragile as a seven pound, uh, as a seven pound wire. So that's, that's one of the first reasons why I love the 19 strand. But in addition to that, uh, there's a few other ways I use a 19 strand. And I got a couple of rods here that I'll talk about. So here I've got a, I've got a rod here. Um, this is one of my, my stream side uh, Predator rods with a Shimano 600 reel. And this particular rod here, I've got um, 50 feet of, uh, 50 feet of uh, torpedo weighted steel. And then behind that, I've got 800 feet of torpedo 19, 19 strand. And I've used the 19 strand as a backer. And the reason why I've done that in this particular rod is I, you know, I can let this out with just the 50 feet if I'm, if I want to fish high for, you know, steelhead or, or coho, um, in the middle of summer when I'm fishing out in the blue zone, but I can also just let out more of the backer. And the, the nice thing about the 19 strand is when it's mated with either, um, you know, weighted steel or like a lead core, it actually will, it essentially has the same sink rate. So with a rod like this, and I've got another one, I've got another one sitting next to me here that's, you know, it's a two color lead core. And again, this one's got about 800, 850, and 19 strand backer on it. Um, I can just kind of re, I can just reset my counter to the zero and let out as much as I want. So if I want to hypothetically take that 50, that 50 weighted steel and mimic a 200, all I can do is let out the 50, reset my counter, let out 150 feet of that 19 strand backer, and I've essentially mimicked a 200 weighted steel. So I really love this setup because it, uh, it makes it a very, very universal. Uh, you know, these rods where I'm really not committing to a particular depth when it comes to the um, weighted steel or the lead core that I'm putting on it. So I'll often, like I said, I've got a 50, I've got a 50 weighted steel here that I use and I'll basically use that as my shoot rod uh, down the center of the boat. And, you know, if I want to fish up high, maybe I'll let out 100, 150. But if I want to get that down deeper with a spoon, I might, I want to mimic a, a 300. I'll let out the 50 weighted steel, and then I'll let out another 250 of, uh, of that 19 strand backing. And, and it works incredibly well. You know, the one question I do get uh, often asked is, how do I, uh, how do I use weighted steel with, uh, with boards, with big boards? So I, I run big boards a lot on my, uh, on my charter boat. And I, don't, I do not recommend uh, clipping your release clips to the 19 strand. You don't want to. You don't want to run the risk of damaging the 19 strand. So what I actually do is, 
I, t I get an elastic band. And, you know, I got, I got a toothpick here as a demo, but let's pretend this was the way to steel line. I, sorry, not way to steel. It was the 19 strand. I basically just do like a half hitch around. And I hitch, I hitch that elastic band, as you can see, around. If, in this case, it'd be the weighted steel, but I just don't have, you know, weighted steel with tension on it right now here. And then all I do is I take my, I take a clip, my release clip, and I clip it towards pretty close to that, that wire line. But that way, if a fish hits, it'll, one of two things will happen. The wire will either cut the elastic band or the elastic band will pop out of the clip. Either one is a, is a, is a good situation. So that is actually how I can take these rods that I call universal rods, like this one here with a two color on it with all 19 strand backer. And I really make those into um, universal long line rods because I can let out as much as I want. Don't get me wrong, on my boat, I still have a 150 way to steal, a 200 way to steal, a 250, a 300, a 350, and a 400. But, you know, I've got, I've got one of each of those. So if a particular rod starts working really well and I want to put a second one out, that's when I'll grab either this two color with weight to steel behind it or the, sorry, the two color with 19 strand behind it or the 50 weight to steel with 19 strand behind it because those are my two, uh, my two universal rods. So that's the second method. First method is using it as, a, as my high dipsies. The second method is using it as a backer with my uh, 50 weight to steel or my two color lead core. And you're not restricted to that either. Just I'm running it on a smaller Dakota 600, so I find 50, uh, you know, the 50 weight of steel or a two color fits with you know 800 feet of, of uh, 19 strand. And then the third method that I'm gonna I use weighted steel. Sorry, I use 19 strand is definitely gonna be a little bit um, unconventional. And what I'm gonna talk about here is this particular rod right here. This is one of my Streamside Predator nine foot downrigger rods. I've got it mated with a Takota 700. And this is actually a 19 strand setup that I use as a downrigger rod. And I wanna talk about why I use this. So, I've, but first I gotta talk about a bit of a story. So um, don't get me wrong, I've got, your, I've got your typical downrigger setups on the boat where I'm running you know, a, a 700 uh, with 40 pound monofilament uh, on that reel and that's it. And, and those are definitely my standard uh, you know, downrigger rods that I use on the boat um, very, very often. But I'll take you back to um, this past, uh, this past uh, summer. Uh, you know, I, I was actually fishing uh, one of the largest tournaments on the Canadian side of, uh, of Lake Ontario called the Scotty King of Kings. It's, it's, it's a great tournament. You know, it's a, uh, you know, with your, with your buy-in and your Calcuttas, it's a $2,000 buy-in. So it's a big money tournament. And uh, it's important to land those fish. And we'd had some really, really rough weather um, before that. Big blows, lake flipped. Everything you don't want to have happen for a tournament, we'd had happen. So, um, you know, it's the, uh, it's, the, it's the day of the tournament. You know, conditions are not great. Um, lake has lake flipped. Um, you know, we set up in our first spot that we, able, we were able to get a few hours of pre-fishing the day before. And it, it, was, it was dud. It was dead. Um, you know, uber cold water. We, were, we weren't getting any fish. So made a decision to uh, to buzz out uh, deep to some coordinates that I've had really good success uh, fishing out deep, especially when the lake has flipped. So we get out to about uh, 400 feet of water and, uh, you know, ready, ready to set up. And I know we're going to be having to, you know, I know that we're going to get some fish probably up, up high, but we're, you know, the fish up high, we're going to be fighting, you know, steelhead to try and find some coho and kings. And this is a king or coho only tournament. So those steelhead... They're, they're a nuisance. They're in the way. So I know that the high rods are going to be taking um, probably, you know, a mixture of coho and, uh, and steelhead, and we don't want steelhead. So I've made a decision that we're going to commit the downriggers. We're going to commit those downriggers down deep. And when I say deep, I mean, you know, 120 feet on one downrigger, 150, 160 feet on the other downrigger. And I've got my regular monofilament rods, uh, you know, 40-pound uh, big game monofilament rods. So we put those down. And anyone that has fished a downrigger rod down deep with monofilament knows that um, you get this massive bow in your line uh, when you've got when you're fishing that deep, and it's really really difficult to get that slack out of your line. And and the moment you get a hit, 
you're reeling like a madman to try and get um, that slack out of line. Um, and, and, you know, too many times you will lose the fish because there's just so much slack. You know, it's, it's, it's one thing when you see the fish attacking and it doesn't quite pop the clip, you can get ahead of it and you can reel out the slack. But when you get a, you get a king that hits hard and then suddenly beelines the opposite direction, you know, too many times you lose the fish. Well, you know what happened. You know, we, we must, you know, and my, my tournament team, uh, they saw me pulling my hair out, you know, no matter who was trying to get the rod uh, quickest and fastest, we were getting some big hits on those deep, uh, on those deep riggers down 120 and 160 feet. And we were losing the fish. You know, we, we lost enough fish to more than fill our, our, uh, our six fish box. And I was really, really, really frustrated. So after that tournament, I'm like, got to figure something out when fishing deep because it's not working. Prior to that, I would have used, I would have used braid, but you know, braid is not always a fail safe because if the fleas are out, um, you know, they gum up the blade, the braid and it, it's useless. You're not getting that fish in. So that's where this particular setup comes in. And, and I'll, I know this is a Dakota 700. So I'm going to walk you through how, what I've actually got on this reel. So on this particular reel, I've got about 800 feet of 50 pound braid as a backer. And then what I've done is I've used an Albright knot to connect the braid to the Torpedo 19 strand. And then I've spooled a complete spool of this Torpedo 19 strand, you know, the 40 pound breaking strength 19 strand. I've got a complete spool of that on this rod. And then what I've done is from a leader perspective, I've just taken like your favorite monofilament. You know, for me, I like the leader of this particular rod to be a monofilament uh, and not a fluorocarbon. And I'll tell you why in a second. But you take your favorite mon monofilament. So in my case, I've got a 40 pound monofilament. And I've put about 35 to 40 feet of monofilament as a leader. And I've attached that to the 19 strand also with an Albright knot. And then from there, I just put a torpedo size four premium swivel on the end. And that's how I got it terminated. And then I'll just run my, uh, connect my flasher, my spin doctor, whatever it may be, to that setup. The reason why I use the monofilament though, is I want some stretch. You know, when, when it comes to this setup here with the 19 strand, especially when you're fishing deep, you wanna have a high quality reel, you know, like the Dakotas, like the Daiwa Saltist, something with a really solid, smooth drag. And, you know, even then, the monofilament, that is, that is your stretch. That is your giving the line. Because 19 strand does not have any stretch. It's, it's, it's wire. So this is your stretch to uh, give you a bit of flexibility with that fish. The other reason why you need to have the monofilament is the monofilament is going to get connected to your release clip. Whether you use a Black's release clip like I do on the boat and you're spinning the monofilament to clip it in. Or if you're using a Scotty pinch pad or something like that you're not gonna connect that to your, your, to your 19 strand. So that's what you're connecting that to the monofilament. So you're connecting that to the monofilament and then you've typically got you know, 25, 30, 35 feet of lead between where it's connected, so call it your cannonball and, uh, and your rig. But what the benefits are of running this 19 strand, um, in addition to the strength of the 19 strand and, you know, it's, and it's, uh, it's resistance to kinks and you know, and, and, that, and that type of stuff, you've got the benefit of uh, really two benefits. First of all, um, you do not have that bow in the line anymore. You can, you can, you know, it takes a bit of getting used to, but you can really crank down the, the, the 19 strand where it's almost like it's just going straight down um, like a downrigger cable would be. You know, you don't have that bow in the line of monofilament when you're running that, that super thin 19 strand. So that to me is the biggest benefit when fishing deep and using it as a downrigger rod. It's just cutting through the, uh, it's cutting through the water and you've got far less slack to try to reel in if you get a big hit down deep. So that's one of, that's one of the first reasons. The second reason, it's those spiny water fleas. You know, and I can tell you on, great, on, the great, on, on Lake Ontario, we get a lot of spiny water fleas and uh, you know, they, uh, they'll gum up, uh, they'll gum up braid, they'll gum up thin monofilament. That's one of the reasons why I'm using Dakota 700s with 40 pound is to try to uh, combat those, those fleas. But with a 19 strand, it's a non-issue. If they do grab onto it, as you wind up the, uh, the line, uh, they, they, the fleas hit the eyelet and they just like explode off and it's, it's, it's much, much easier. 
So that is uh, what I would find some of the biggest benefits to this particular setup. And like I said, it's not, uh, it's, it's not a difficult setup to put together. It's quite simple. You know, just to kind of go over it again, on this, seven, on this Dakota 700, I've got, um, on this Dakota 700, I've got a uh, thousand, sorry, 800, 850 feet of uh, 50 pound braid, 1,000 feet of 19 strand, and then I think I got a 35 foot, um, 40 pound big game uh, leader. Super, super simple setup. Uh, but let me tell you, if you if you like to fish deep, this is the setup to have. And I've actually just seen a question come in, so I want to make sure I get the question right. I've been asked by Brandon, do I do I have to change the rod tip of the rigger rod with wire? So Brandon, I find myself when I'm running the 19 strand, I don't have to change the rod tip um, with a with a down rigger rod. If I was running if I was running a uh, seven strand, I, I would absolutely uh, change the rod tip. I'd find, I find the 19 strand is far more forgiving. Even, you know, if I, if I grab these, uh, you know, these lead core, uh, lead core weighted steel copper rods here from Streamside I've, I, that I use 19 strand as a backer, I'm still using the standard uh, rod end there, also the tip. I haven't changed those either, and there's no, no issues. Myself, I find uh, it's more so when I'm running seven strand. That's when, it, here's one with seven strand that's when I'm putting on a, a spring tip or running the torpedo, uh, the torpedo uh, tip. That's when I'm changing the tip when I'm running the seven strand. But uh, definitely, uh, no, I don't find there's an E with a 19 strand. So thank you for the question, Brandon. It's a great question. So, uh, you know, I also got another question here and please feel free if you've got questions, uh, fire, them, fire them in right now. But I got a question from Tony asking me, um, if I, uh, do you like ice fishing and what is your favorite species to fish for through the ice? Tony, are you going to hate this? I, I don't, I don't like the cold, my friends. So I'm, uh, I'm not someone that enjoys, uh, ice fishing. Uh, while I've, uh, while I fished, uh, you know, Lake Ontario for, you know, 30 plus years, I, I was born and raised in England. Uh, don't like the cold weather. Uh, you know, I hibernate in the winter and in the winter, I'm the guy that is, uh, I'm preparing for the summer, getting all my tackle ready. I paint a lot of my own rigs and my own flashers and tape them. So that's what I do in the winter. I'm uh, I'm I'm not a nice fishing guy. So uh, my my apologies. I've tried it a few times. I just I just don't uh, I don't enjoy it. I love being out there on a boat on a big lake. Um, you know, enjoying uh, enjoying not only the not only the water but the sur the scenery of the uh, of the lake versus sitting inside uh, and sitting inside a, a a hut. My apologies. I know Tony. You just went. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Um, I also got another question here about, um, you know, does the wire, the wire doesn't cut the mono and which raw and which not? That's a really good question, John. So if, if, if you try tying seven strand to mono wire, I find it does cut the knot. Again, 19 strand is a, it's a, it's a, it's a bit thicker wire. It's far more I, forgiving, I would say. And I've not had any issues with, uh, the 19 strand cutting a 40 pound monofilament. Now that being said, I do uh, I do check uh, my my rods often, and I would also say running a charter boat especially um, that monofilament often gets scuffed uh, scuffed up against you know uh, whether it be the boat whether it be um, downrigger cables. So I do find I'm changing that section of monofilament probably once every three four weeks. Uh, so, you know, that probably does help because I've always got rel a relatively new section of monofilament on there, but it's really, really easy to change. Like I said, I'm just using an, an Albright knot to connect between the 19 strand and, uh, and the monofilament. Albright knot is one of my, uh, one of my favorite knots when I'm connecting different types of line together, um, that, that I use, it'd be the Albright knot. You know, you can Google it. It's a, it's a pretty easy knot actually to tie. That's probably another reason why I like that knot. It's uh, it's not a not a hard knot to tie. So uh, it doesn't look like we've got any other questions. So I'll give it a second to see if anyone has any questions that come in. But while uh, while I'm waiting for some questions, uh, it's probably appropriate for me to ask this week's question. So hopefully you're, you've all been uh, you've all been listening. So uh, the question for this week, and don't forget, you need to make sure you've liked and shared this uh, this video because it does make you eligible to, to win 
and to answer this question, as well as uh, just a reminder, you can only answer once today and you can only win once a month. But, um, you know, actually, before I answer the question, I'm going to put you in suspense. I've got another question come in. What is the, uh, I got a question. What is the termination between weighted steel and, uh, and the wire? Um, so a couple of, uh, there's a couple of different ways to do that, Brandon. Um, you know, myself, what I do when I'm terminating between the, uh, the weighted steel and the wire is, uh, I'll do it one of two ways. I will, first of all, get the, the torpedo weighted steel termination kit with the, uh, the, um, the shrink tube and the little, uh, the little crimps. And that's what I'll use to terminate, uh, to the weighted steel. Then from there, you can do one of two things. You can actually just tie the 19 strand to that swivel like you would tie wire on a dipsy rod where you, where you just loop it over with a single knot. You can, do, you can do that. Or what I prefer to do is I've actually got a spool of a 100-pound braid. And I'll take the 100-pound braid. I will tie that to the swivel. And then I will use an Albright knot to tie that braid to the weighted steel. And it may only be a 12 inch piece, but I'll have that braid in between. Uh, that's my preferred method of uh, when I tie uh, tie 19 strand to uh, two weighted steel. Hopefully that helps. So now let's, uh, let's see if there's any more questions before I ask, you know, this week's question. So this week's question, uh, remember you've got to answer, uh, you've got to answer in the comments and you have to make sure that you've liked and uh, liked this uh, live feed and shared it. Uh, with your friends, share it on your favorite uh, favorite fishing group, um, is what is the breaking strength of torpedo 19 strand uh, wire? That's this week's question. So uh, let's start seeing those answers come in and I'll give it another 30 seconds to see if we have any more questions. So while, like, while the questions are coming in, just a big thank you to everyone for watching uh, this week's video. Big thank you to Matthew and Ariane for giving me the opportunity to uh, host this week. It was my first time doing it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I did a okay job. And I see, uh, I see some, uh, some answers coming in. I'm not gonna comment on if they're correct or not. Uh, you know, Ariane will go through that process and you guys will know in the, uh, in the, in the near future. But a big thank you to everyone. Have a have a fantastic uh, winter season. For those of you that are ice fishing, uh, like Tony, please, uh, please be safe out there. And for those of you that are like me and don't ice fish and hibernate in the winter, um, enjoy the winter. Get all your gear ready. Uh, spring can't come soon enough. Thanks so much, folks, and I look forward to doing this again in the future. Talk to you later. Bye.